Okay, dear friends, uh, we are happy to see you all how to take up uh, the business and where it is landing, we are not sure. So we thought uh, it would be nice uh, rather than having a small webinar and finish the topic rather than systematically study uh, how the business is going, what are the challenges we are going to face and how the business model has to be uh, geared up to, to take up these challenges and what business plan we have to make and uh, how uh, the market strategy should be taken place. Um, we have an excellent uh, uh, speaker today, which uh, most of you know personally, but it is my privilege to introduce uh, Mr. Arun Segal. Uh, he's uh, specialized uh, uh, in the area of international marketing and uh, sales, as well as global business uh, uh, expansion. Over the past 30 years, um, uh, Arun Segal built up his own uh, international business across more than 48 countries. Uh, as a first generation entrepreneur. He also teaches subjects uh, like uh, global entrepreneurship, international marketing, international business, uh, innovation management, international brand building, cross cultural selling and global business leadership creation. He has also a senior, he's also a senior faculty of the World Trade Center Mumbai Institute. As uh, most of you know, we have an institute which uh, conducts uh, uh, diploma courses in foreign, uh, one of the practical uh, 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 course which we are conducting. The details will be shared later. Um, Mr. Arun Segal is also uh, heading the Kembro Group, uh, which has a network of uh, uh, 137 factories located across India, including chemicals, specialty chemicals, dyes and pharmaceuticals so in 16 countries. Can I request uh, Adult Segal to take charge of this uh, program? Thank you. We will be talking about, you know, how businesses are transforming. And uh, uh, of course, uh, I am now going to tell you the basic flow of the three days. Are you able to see my screen, everyone? Yes, sir. Okay. Sure. And while we are going through the presentation, while you are listening to the concepts, I'll ask you and I'll encourage you to think about your businesses and think about how you could make them relevant, how those businesses are getting impacted because of different kind of disruptions that you have to expect in the future. My telescope is in the future and we are looking at up to year 2050, which is a good period because that is the period where your you know, next generation is going to be taking the big challenges and perhaps a lot of you who are in my age group will be sitting back and taking on the role of coach and mentor. So uh, think about you know how your businesses are going to be impacted and if you have any questions, I'd be very happy to discuss your case studies of your businesses not just survive, idea is to grow. And you know, whenever uh, we talk about future and whenever we talk about succeeding, it is not the businesses that succeed, actually, if you think about it. It's the people behind those businesses that succeed. And therefore, what those people have to be like, what are the traits of those successful entrepreneurs, those are the things that we will first identify based on the case studies. And while we do those case studies, you know, which are of successful companies, taking some case studies of some big failures, which all of us may been know about you know because failures are known more successful you know companies that you know which are really creating new milestones new records a lot of these case studies we will not be knowing perhaps and even some of the cases when i was doing research i was really amazed that what kind of creativity and you know what kind of amazing innovations people have done and what kind of figures and what kind of sales they have created only thing is they are in the best cases are outside of india some very good cases are of india also which i'm going to talk about uh, but you know we learn from people who have succeeded people who are succeeding now people who are creating disruptions in the businesses now and people who are likely to create disruptions in the future we learn what they are doing that are creating disruptions one of the things that i have done as part of the research for this mdp particularly for the next three days is that i have created and a lot of learning from these success stories and then created kind of a model on how to create disruption on how to create innovation and there is uh, a lot of uh, theory part and there is a lot of uh, uh, application 
version of that theory that you will find and we will talk about it. So concepts I will give which are theoretical and then they will be evolved from the case studies that I have taken and then we will apply these concepts to our businesses and how these concepts can be applied to our business to create innovations and create disruptions because you have heard of the term and this I'm going to be talking about a lot disrupt or get disrupted of course there's no business so you have to continuously be on toes and so let's see how this uh, the few fundamentals I'm going to be talking about and here we go okay so let's discuss uh, very quickly the contents and the topics that we are going to cover and I like that this uh, MDP is more interactive. Uh, you ask questions, I hope to ignite your thoughts and we want to have a dialogue. So the content uh, of this MDP and the flow is going to be like this. Uh, first of all, why build the global business? Now, the obvious answer is that we want to create more wealth. But in addition to wealth creation, it also brings a very, very important aspect to our business and that is respect creation. Companies who are global create not just wealth, but a huge respect globally. So that's a huge motivator. Then we are going to learn about the resources needed for global business. And we have heard of 5M resources. It all starts with money, materials, machinery, manpower. If you see all these five resources, that is money, materials, machinery, manpower, and minutes, there are three resources, that is money, materials, machinery, which are decided by manpower. And how this manpower uses the time that they have on their disposal decides the amount of wealth and respect that they will end up creating. So let's say manpower and money. Uh, are the manpower and minutes are the two basic critical resources. The manpower is the right, will decide how to raise the right amount of money. They will decide how to get the right kind of owners. They will decide how to get the right kind of machinery to create products and services for the global consumers. So manpower ends up becoming the most critical resource and how this manpower then is directed and is guided to spend the time that they have at their disposal to create wealth is what is critical. So global entrepreneurs normally will focus on uh, the two critical resources that is the men that they require in their teams and time spent by them. Focus on these two critical resources then you end up seeding. Next we will discuss the understanding the importance of the critical resource. So as I said if manpower is the basic resource then Every business requires a particular kind of quality, particular type of personality, certain attitudes, certain skill sets, certain habits, certain knowledge areas in order to succeed. It all starts with the value system and the character for the manpower that you deploy, whether they are promoters or they are employees. The character and values of these people behind the business decide the success of a particular business at the global level. The one thing that I have learned is that if you want to succeed globally, you truly have to become a very good human being in terms of your value system, in, term of, in terms of your character, so that's what binds different people from different cultures internationally. Language is always going to be a barrier. What we wear is a barrier. What we eat is a barrier. Everything is different. But what binds people across different cultures is the values and the character. And that's why these two traits are very, very important. Of course, every business requires a different kind of knowledge areas. You need to be the best. You need the products of the future that will be, which are again common attitudes for succeeding in business. There are certain skill sets required in the promoters, in the employees that are relevant for that business and therefore they are critical too. And of course, there are certain habits that again the manpower resource associated business requires in order to grow the business. Now, if I was to take examples, then of course, an attitude of never giving up. I think it's a very, very important attitude that the global entrepreneur need to have because going forward, it's going to get tough. More disruptions, more competition. You cannot have an attitude of giving up so easily. It's just one.
one example, we'll know more about it as we go forward. But every business requires certain attitudes, which are very critical for the success of those businesses. As global entrepreneurs, we need to understand what our attitudes need to be that will help us succeed in businesses. Similarly, the skill set. If you are in a food business, you need to have skills about cooking. You need to have skills about creating new recipes every day. They are important. Just one more example. If you are in that business of food, again, then some of the habits that you need to understand what, you know, if the customer is not liking a particular meal, you need to have the habit of tasting yourself, trying to be critical. So every rejection should create a new learning. Now that is a very critical habit. If you are in a technology-based business, then what new technologies are coming up related to your business? If you are in software business, then which kind of new uh, languages are you being used? Which kind of new algorithms are coming up? All that is critical in terms of having the right habits about reading. Where the research is happening, that is critical. Now, if you are in healthcare business, then research related to cancer, research related to Alzheimer's, in which parts of the world, what other people have found out, what are the results of different clinical trials, as a habit, all that reading, extra reading that you need to do, keep yourself updated is very, very important. So your knowledge areas have to be the best, your attitudes have to be the best, your skill set have to be very relevant to the businesses that you're trying to take to the level and the habits. You have to learn, of course, these are the times of Corona, so international travel cannot be, uh, you know, uh, uh, cited as a habit, but definitely you have to love meeting people if you are in global business. But then again, with the digital transformation, etc., we will find a new normal for having e-meetings or working out on Zoom meetings like these. But that is only going to be temporary. I think in the two years, whenever it becomes normal, we will see again people going back travel like never before. Because at the end of the day, it's not only the money, people also want to have one. And therefore, international travel is going to be coming back. It's just a matter of time. And I hope to overcome the current pandemic situation and then come back to the normal life as it existed before the pandemic. So these are the areas starting with character and values, the knowledge, attitude, skills and habits. You need to have the right combination for succeeding as a global entrepreneur in any business. Next, we will understand the importance of basic business value. Now, if you see, historically, a lot of products have come and gone. A lot of companies have come and gone. You know, companies like Blackberry, Nokia, Kodak, these are used to be one time very respectable companies. And there are so many more. We will know and we will study about them more in the coming presentations. But the business variables which make a business successful have actually not changed. For any business to succeed, you still require sales. For any business to succeed, you still require contribution margins that are positive. For any business to succeed, you require product life cycle that are very attractive. And if the product life cycles are becoming, let's say, getting shortened by any of the new interruptions or disruptions, then we need to also evolve the products so that new products are launched and the businesses continue and sustainability is assured. So the basic variables and the basic concepts of the businesses haven't changed. Yes, how the products and services are going to be delivered and are getting delivered, there is a huge change because of the technological disruptions. And those are things that we have to learn. So some of the tangibles like say, multiplied by the contribution margin, multiplied by the number of years of that is in business. Now, these are the three basic business variables and we as a global entrepreneur need them. And they have not changed and they will not change in the future too. These are the tangible business variables. There are intangible business variables also. For example, creating excellent customer service experience, creating, uh, you know, timely deliveries of products, you know, giving the best pricing to the consumer and getting fantastic ratings about your products and deliveries. These are again the intangible, making your customer feel special, making your customer feel, uh, the you know, the customer should feel that you are trustworthy, you are dependable, you are reliable. Now, all these are intangible deliverables and they will never change in the business. So what as a global entrepreneur therefore we will have to learn is that within these variables tangible and intangible how do we create new business models so that they become scalable and sustainable right so 
which are the variables that create a power to connect with the consumers we are seeing a lot of technological disruptions around us that are changing that are shortening the life of the traditional businesses and they are bringing new businesses into existence there is only one you know uh, business model that you see around you which is in plenty that is reorganize remodernize and scale up so if you see most of the e-commerce that companies that have come a lot of them are not making profit as of today but all that they have done is that they have created the delivery models and they are creating these intangibles the reliability the convenience in a way that they are disrupting the traditional let's say brick and mortar stores so these are some of the things that we have to keep in mind and see that how we can look at our current businesses see how we can integrate technology into it see how we can keep them relevant and that is what we will learn then what that requires is a shift in thinking because traditionally the entrepreneurs did businesses differently the trades required for success were also you know a little bit different but going forward trades required for succeeding are going to be in for a big change now what are those trades we will also learn in the, the next 2 3 days now coming to the strategies for succeeding and building sustainable businesses globally basically they are just simple three strategies and i call the trinity the first is you have to be a leader in sustainable innovation right so you have to be a leader in that you have to be ha- having the cap- capabilities to disrupt in- instead of getting disrupted so disrupt or get disrupted so innovation is the key you have to create innovation leadership in your business that is the first strategy any business you take create innovation see how you can reach the masses so that your volumes increase and your wealth creation potential that increases and that will keep you on your toes so you have to keep on seeing what your competition is doing how can you be better than them in terms of innovation so that is the first strategy creating innovation leadership second is creative uh, innovation to reduce your cost of production you have to ensure that you create cost leadership in mm-hmm. your business whatever you manufacture even the mm-hmm. quality of what you manufacture which is maybe better mm-hmm. than your competition you have to ensure that you create it in the business where your cost of production is mm-hmm. lower than the competition so your strategy is keeping a eye on your costs and seeing that that is your products are manufactured and made available to the consumer in a possible way which ensures that your costing overall costing is the best in the industry so your second strategy after innovation leadership is creating cost third is service excellence gone are the days when we used to talk about customer satisfaction when it today comes to serving the customer we have reached new peaks and that's almost saying that we want to spoil the customer today the customer globally is spoiled with service people are used to getting more so you have to ensure that no negative emotions get generated during your transaction with the customer before during and after sales so these are some of the uh, we cover in the seminar and uh, next why the disruptions are so important to business now if you see humanity has progressed only because of disruptions had disruptions not been there there would be no progress so disruptions actually force us to improve the lives of people on this planet and therefore they are important and of course disruptions happen around us so the what is the 360 degree view it's not only the technology area that disrupt you know the demography of the world is changing the number of people are increasing what are the age profiles of these people what are the education levels of these people what is the male female ratio in different countries what are the cultural aspects all these plus political plus economic all these factors they give rise to a certain kind of you know products opportunities for different kind of products so that's why the disruptions are important and we learn more about them next comes understanding past current and future disruptions as i said this is not the first time that disruptions have started of course now why we talk more about 
disruptions is because their you know frequency has increased their intensity has increased their impact has become more severe and you know you see a lot of different businesses starting today and not lasting very much so the product life cycles of products and the businesses have reduced so we talk more of disruptions but the fact is historically the businesses have always lived with disruptions you know and we will learn some about you know past disruptions and in, in more detailed presentations to come which are the current disruptions now if you see a lot of disruptions are happening in developed countries and relatively less in the developing countries so we will have to learn from the developed countries like let's say USA but i would say to understand the disruptions a lot is happening in china so there are a lot of very you know good examples to learn from in china and there is a huge gap in our country and i think that gap can be bridged we learn from what is happening in america and china so i've taken some examples from both these countries of the companies that are creating disruptions and creating huge businesses so a lot of them are happening thanks to technology so there are some technology based businesses but i have also taken examples of some of the futuristic businesses uh, you know in the let's say fashion i have taken examples in uh, let's say education taken examples uh, in uh, healthcare i have taken examples in food so we will see what are those businesses which are integrating technology and creating disruptions in those countries and we are yet to follow them to that extent in indian market so that gives a lot of room for understanding and adapting those kind of business models and creating businesses based out of india in those spaces but let's not restrict i mean the whole purpose of this presentation is to get inspiration so that and to to acquire a certain kind of mindset a mindset that helps us analyze the environment a mindset that helps us empower ourselves to understand what kind of businesses we can create going forward depending upon the changes that we expect that will happen in the environment in the next let's say 30 years going up to 2050 so our view will be for the next 3 decades and our major micro detailing we can do is for the next decade that is up to 2030 so i will invite questions from you regarding the future so that you know we we have a very very fruitful kind of uh, interaction and we all get empowered uh, together collectively uh, in in terms of our outlook in terms of our view in terms of our ability to identify new businesses that we can create at the global level we will learn a lot about globalization okay what globalization had been in the past and what are the future trends actually day we are at an inflection point where the process of globalization itself is in for a big change so what is that change you know we will learn about that uh, in the more detailed presentation which is about to come uh, focus on basic business variable that we talked about that is volumes contribution margins and product life cycles if we just focus and look at every product these three lenses we will be able to sniff the right opportunities i hope and it is going to be my effort that by the end of the third day we develop the ability to sniff the right opportunities create business plans with the right kind of concepts which are going to be uh, having greater chances of succeeding finally mastering the traits of a successful future global entrepreneur i think i'm going to make an effort a huge effort to see that you we all together learn what are those traits in the entrepreneur that are going to be in demand like never before which are going to be needed for succeeding in business at the global level for, for first of all we have to succeed in creating a global business then we have to create sustainable and scalability and sustainability of that business so there are some new traits that are going to be needed much more than ever before what are those traits we will learn in the in details over the next two days three days and mastering the art of creative innovative disruption I think this one single trait is going to decide the successes of businesses in future, whether we do it at local level or we have to we do it at global level. But you will have to learn the art of being a creative, innovative disruptor. Another thing that we are going to develop.
and region empowerment for and a little bit awareness and we will look at the next 10 years and look at the global pestle environment and how this environment is going to impact our existing businesses maybe they'll make them irrelevant what we will have to do to stay relevant in our existing businesses and how the pestle over the next decade is changing create new future of areas of business different businesses are emerging you know the gdp over the years if you see has been growing it's close to around 86 billion trillion dollars right now expected of course to come down because of uh, the current pandemic but over the years it has continuously grown you have seen that businesses have gone bust and we see that a lot more businesses are likely to go bust but does that mean that uh, the global gdp has reduced or does it mean that in future is the gdp going to reduce the answer is no so if we are looking at businesses that are dying we should not be worried because what is happening is the businesses are becoming outdated. The businesses are becoming irrelevant. Now, as an entrepreneur, therefore, uh, you have to have the ability where the money is going, where the products and services are being exchanged for money. And obviously, you will realize that now there are new areas emerging where the transactions are taking place. Therefore, we have to look at all the disruptions, the likely disruptions that are going to take place in the next years. You see, there are the, the six very critical questions that as a global entrepreneur, you need to have answers to. One, why I want to do this business, right? Second, what am I going to produce and make a service available to my global consumers, right? Who are they? Where are they located? When they consume my product or service, how do I make it available to them? Now, if you have the right answers at any given point in time in future, and these answers will change depending upon the competition and depending upon the emerging consumer needs. Now, if you acquire this ability, continuously audit these answers in this environment, you know, you will have the ability to make the changes in your business and always succeed. So, political environments, when you're talking about entering different global markets, right, it will, there are certain countries that are weak politically and they can disrupt you. If you have business in that country, your business can get disrupted because of political unrest or political uh, changes in that country, you know. So, you have to be careful. Now, which are the geographical areas where the, there are political disruptions expected in the next 10 years? We will learn it. On the economic front also, you know, we are going to look at which product segments and which markets need to be selected for making your product or service available. This is very critical because you have to select the right products in the right market. It's a combination of both that is going to create wealth optimally and on a sustained basis. So which are the economic disruptions that we expect in the environment, in the business environment around us, which will impact our businesses? And how do we respond? You know, if we respond well, we will be succeeding. If we don't respond, we will die. You don't have any other option. It is better, therefore, to learn how and which economic disruptions can be expected in the next 10 years and how we can leverage on these disruptions, create new businesses or to make our existing businesses relevant. The third one is, of course, the socio-cultural disruptions that we expect over the next 10 years. That means how the societies are changing, how the demography around the world is changing, what is the age pattern in different parts of the world, where the, the populations are growing, where the markets are shifting, which products are likely to be in more greater future demand. All that we will be able to learn only if we learn how the socio-cultural disruptions are going to be impacting over the next 10 years. A lot of new businesses you will see they will be emerging. A lot of old businesses you think they will be dying which are there today. You know, The fourth disruption which is technological disruption is a huge change maker right now. All technology are changing. New technologies are emerging. Uh, every industry is adapting new technologies, coming out with newer products, coming out with newer services, and we are seeing the acceleration of these developments. Uh, they, they are going to become very, very. They will be creating a lot more opportunities.
technologies in the future, keeping a track of all these technological disruptions over the next 10 years will again empower us in keeping our existing businesses relevant, staying ahead of the competition, or identifying new opportunities, you know, for creating new businesses, right? We need to get that ability to understand how we can use the technology, adapt the technology, you are integrated into our existing businesses to grow further. Example, if you take the current pandemic, you know, it's really creating a huge opportunity for, uh, you know, digital transformation. The businesses that are succeeding in digital transformation, they are actually experiencing a much lesser impact of the pandemic. And those businesses that are still struggling, they are really facing a much bigger impact of uh, this pandemic. And going forward, you will see a lot of digital transformation and this digital transformation itself giving birth to new businesses and new behaviors, and new purchasing patterns. And uh, so this is something that we need to definitely acquire as a trait to how to uh, understand the technological disruptions, which ones are coming in our way in different sectors around us uh, of business and how they are going to be changing the way we live. And obviously, the byproduct is going to be identification of new business opportunities. The fifth is the environment. Now you see that for many years, the human progress has actually been at the cost of environment. And when we have used environmental resources, we have plundered all these resources, used them for you know, personal gains and actually created a lot of harm to the environment. We see the global warming, you know, we see those natural disasters, we see earthquakes, we see tsunamis, we see hurricanes and, you know, the kind of natural disasters that we are facing of late, their intensity has increased. People are saying that, you know, our temperature, uh, the, uh, the outside temperatures that envelop the earth, they have already increased by one degree. And if one more degree there will be no more life on this planet and all this has happened because of global warming carbon footprints the carbon dioxide emissions now going forward obviously creating more money has no meaning if there's going to be no life by the year 2050 as predicted by the environmentalists we have to arrest the global warming and if we have to make plans for newer businesses they have to in include the people other species with whom humans coexist and the planet, the Mother Earth. We cannot cause harm. In fact, we have to undo the harm already caused. Current pandemic and some of the earlier ones, you see that a lot of them have their roots in the animal kingdom. Man is actually invading spaces belonging to the other species. And obviously, the nature has decided to redeem itself. And when the nature decides to redeem itself, you know, it will redeem, but then there will be no human life. If you really think deeply today, I don't know whether Corona is a problem or Corona has come because humans have become a problem. Think about it. I'll leave you with that thought. Finally, you see the technology is changing at such a pace that there is no regulations. Take, for example, drones. Now, drones have a lot of effort. But then, no, the same technology can also have very negative views also. It can be disastrous. So there have to be a legal environment that regulates the new technology and the products based on this new technology. And same thing has happened in the case of, let's say, bioengineering. You know, we have created, we can create today our prototypes. Now, whether that is good, so there are ethical issues involved. There are safety issues involved. So the legal environment of business has not evolved today to the extent that the technologies have evolved. So there is a huge gap between the technological disruptions and the required legal environment to regulate the new products and services. Now, obviously, that has impact, you know, because businesses start and then people realize that, oh, this is not good, our privacy is not uh, taken care of, or the safety is not taken care of, and therefore, after the company has invested hugely, then suddenly a legal uh, regulation comes up, which is disastrous for business. 
So we have to be aware of this gap between the technology and the legal framework and the, 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 the disruption that can create going forward. So we will learn all about these pestle disruptions, as I call it, and how in the next 10, 10 years, which ones we can expect and how they can create an impact on our businesses. Now, it is going to be my effort to ensure that we have these eight takeaways from uh, this uh, next three year, three days of our interaction. And uh, what we are going to be looking at, number one, is learning about the control variables for building sustainable global business. We'll learn about that. We'll learn about which disruptions can impact our existing businesses and how to stay relevant. And, uh, you know, uh, number three is how we can learn the must-have traits of future global entrepreneurs. And number four, how to learn important ingredients of innovation that create sustainable global businesses. Then how to disrupt or get disrupted. Learn the art of being a disruptor. Then disruptions are not new in business globally. Learn past and the future case studies. Then a peep into the future pestle disruptions to 2020 and 2030 plus and the new business opportunities that will create. And of course, learning with the help of case studies and application of concepts to your business. So this is the agenda. And if you have any questions, you can put up in the chat boxes. If you have any specific requests that you want to be addressed during this MDP, I'll be very happy to do that. We can uh, unmute yourselves or you can put your questions in the chat box or both. Yeah, so, uh, you know, that was just an introduction. I think now we are going to just catch the pace. Uh, uh, basically, uh, what, what we are going to be discussing, I would encourage you to think about, uh, you know, other than this, if you have any specific questions, if you want anything else to be covered, we will cover. Of course, you must have seen that I've covered a lot of concepts in this presentation too. And then uh, some of the concepts with, which we go to, which we need to go deeper into, those are separate presentations which will be coming now. So if you have questions, please, you know, send me on the chat box. Uh, what I would do is, I know you need time. I would just use this time to just give you a peek into the, you know, how the populations have grown and this is my one of the favorite speakers and he's there on youtube so is all that these presentations are the, the small videos that i've created out of his videos for use in my uh, today's uh, presentation it tells you it gives you an insight on how to see how the demographics have changed in the past try to relate it to what businesses they created in the past and then going forward there is a very deep insight okay if I was to ask you, what do you think is the population of children that is likely to be in 2050? You know that the population today on the planet is about 7 billion. But going forward, up to 2050, what is going to be the population of children? Today, they are around 2 billion. Okay. Now, just a way of telling you that how important these insights are because, you know, children are a huge segment and a lot of money is spent. You know, we don't think when we spend money on children, we do think when we spend money on us. So an insight, which is, uh, and this person, in fact, I have chosen this video also because there is an innovation in this video and you will see that it's a holographic video, a presentation of these. This is the future of presentation. So I hope you enjoy it. So what are the historical trends in world population growth and important future insights that will impact global businesses 2020 to 2050 and beyond? Okay, so uh, keep thinking about your questions. I again encourage you to look at what you think is happening in your business, which is disrupting that business today. Also, I'll encourage you to start thinking about new opportunities that are close to your heart, new businesses that are close to your heart, how you can create those businesses and try to think on those in, with these two lenses. Yeah. Look at the opportunities, keeping your or keeping or growing your existing businesses, how to start new businesses. These are the two lenses and think of the questions that you have so that we can have discussions. In the meantime, just small videos so that, you know, uh, we look at the future i here's the here's my favorite uh 
uh, statistician Hans Rosling. So, when this kind of demographic shift is happening, try to relate what newer businesses got created in the history and where. Because when we analyze what happened in the history, you see that a lot of, lot of businesses in the growth of Asian countries, you see the large families in Asia, population living in Asia. So a lot of GDP growth in Asia, a lot of markets emerged in Asia. Now that is how we have to use this kind of analysis. And let's now see in future. Yeah. I love this presentation also, as I told, this is an innovation in presenting. And I hope, Guru Vila says, that in future that we are able to create this kind of presentation after the pandemic is over in World Trade Center, because this is the holographic presentation. Very nice. <laughs> right? So this is one of the reasons I've taken this presentation also. So let, let's take a look. No, I want you to think like entrepreneurs. I want you to see now that how the future is going to be changing, how you see what is going to be the impact of this kind of population growth. Now we are projecting it in the future. Let's see. Right. Going forward. Please. What are the insights? Now as a global entrepreneur, we need to understand what opportunities are going to get created. And what does actually this mean? If if the world population is going to be increasing and the number of children is going to be staying at 2 billion, of course, first of all, we are confused. I'm confused. You are also how the number of children is remaining the same, but we will know he's making that presentation. But what are the insights here as a global entrepreneur? That means the number of people who are a, having been, who are old in the world, in the next 30 years is going to be increasing tremendously. Now, if you are a global entrepreneur, what kind of business opportunities is that situation going to create? We should be able to extract that. That means any products or services for the seniors, that's going to be in big demand. So where is money shifting? where the transactions are going to be taking place will be in this space. It is just one example of how we use pestle analysis to identify future opportunities before others do, right? So let's first of all get answer to how the number of children is going to get restricted at two. And if you are in the child care business, you know, child food business, you know, you see your consumers over the next 30 years going to remain the same. But there is another shift that is happening. Historically, the number of children in developed countries where parents were rich. One report is not found. Yeah, there was some noise. So, Historically, the number of children in the developed countries, because the parents were rich, there was more spending possible on the child products, on the child care products. But in future, where are these children going to be? They are not going to be in developed countries. They are going to be in Asia and Africa. That means the parents' profile, which is different in future from the past, is that the average purchasing power of the parents is also going to be reducing. Now, how does that impact your business? Now, this is an example of analyzing Western. I hear some noise. Can please uh, see you in, mute yourself? Wow. So, if now I think as a global Arun, it's very nice, very nice. Thank you. Thank, thank you, thank you. It's thank really you. wonderful. 
So let's now think as a global entrepreneur, let's see what is happening, where the markets are going to be. You know, if we are going to market whatever products that we are making or plan to make, of course, the consumers are going to be where in the next 30 years and in the next, let's say, 80 years, this PIN codes have to be remembered. In fact, these presentations are there on YouTube. It's all in public domain. That's why I felt free, but I need to give them credit. I really loved, and I, I, I think one of the habits, I talked about habits, one of the habits that I have developed uh, and was always there, I mean, long time ago, is that I'm very hungry for futuristic information from the experts. And I keep looking at, you know, I think more than TV, I watch information on YouTube. Now, this is one habit I'd like that, you know, all of us, you know, I'm sure you have it also. Maybe you have some other habits, which I don't have. I would love to share from you also, because a lot of you, I respect and you are much ahead of me, uh, you know, in terms of uh, in those areas, maybe. And I like to learn. So this hunger for learning has to be there because that really impacts your businesses. In fact, I've been telling my team who's also there in, uh, on this seminar today that, you know, Africa is the future. And we are not there in Africa right now. We are very little there. You know, and I see companies who are operating in Africa. Uh, they are very, very successful. And that is a place to watch. And of course, we have been in Asia. And Asia, I see good uh, uh, revenue. And my team here will agree that we are doing very well in Asia. In fact, the growth comes from Asia already. In the last 20 years, we've not grown because of Europe or US, though the whole world I've seen has been focusing on Europe and US in uh, a lot of businesses. But we categorically, I think it was in the year 2000 uh, or even before 1995 that I started concentrating on Asia and a lot of growth that I experienced in the last 25 years has come from Asia and I'm, I'm likely to see that growth coming in the future mm -hmm. also mm -hmm. up to 2015. Mm -hmm. So that is how the, this is in, you know, very important how we analyze the data. And if you are in garments, if you are in textiles, then, you know, obviously you are making products for a certain age group. And where that age group is going to be residing in the next decade is very important because that's where your, let's say, resources and your market development and those activities have to be directed. So keep an eye on the world, keep an eye on your future consumers, see where they are going. And most importantly, now I'm going to give you one more insight. <laughs> Uh, can I ask uh, everyone to mute, please? Yeah. So, what is the insight? Technology we are seeing. You know, today, if you see the wealth that is there in this world, 1% of the world population has majority of the wealth. You know, the figures are different, but I have seen figures which says more than 80% of the wealth is amongst the top 1% of 7 billion people. Now you see how the, who are the people making money now because of the technological revolutions. And we are now going to get into the case studies. The technological revolutions, you know, earlier the historically money multiplied money. Going forward, there's going to be a huge shift Money is not going to multiply money. It's going to be knowledge that multiplies money. You see how many first-generation entrepreneurs the world has produced because of just technology. People who just knew software, people who just knew coding, got, got into healthcare businesses, got into retail businesses, got into you know taxi businesses, got into food businesses. They had no idea of those businesses. Now, they could do those businesses. They could disrupt the traditional businesses. Why? Because of knowledge. And then they acquired the skills of doing those businesses. And they are going from 
growing very very fast now what this means is what is the percentage of this intelligentsia i'm giving you the insight now and this is just for a thought and we can have discussion on that this intelligentsia percentage people who are really capable they are you know the nature's rule they are very few in numbers already we have created so huge inequality there are super rich people and then there is a vast majority of labor class workers and a lot of people who have who have been below the pro- po- poverty line in fact out of 7 billion i think or today 3 billion are below the poverty line or 2 billion it's expected that 1 billion will go below the poverty line again because of the pandemic so that's another shift that means your cons- your your demand is going to be reducing because if these people go below the poverty line you have that much less number of people so expect next 3 4 years there is going to be a problem of demand because it has taken long time for the world for the economic economies to really pull these people out of the poverty line and you are seeing now a big disruption taking place which is people are losing jobs there are pay cuts and the unemployment is reaching the new highs so how much time it will take to repair itself that ability and my estimate is the way this pandemic is going is going to be at least 3 years before the demand really comes back where people get their jobs back and then the purchasing power comes back and then people start going to the mall the retails etc even though e-commerce is filling up a gap that has been created because of social distancing but it's going to take good 3 years so those of you who are into consumer products it is a wake up call be aware of it if you are planning investments if you are planning anything that is going to be you know a new project etc this is the time to rethink and see and that is one major uh, insight the second insight i have is that if in the future if in the future there are going to be even lesser number of people you know we are talking about in you know, all the the jeff bezos and these are going to be the kind of people who are going to be um, uh, you know creating the uh, the wealth now we are talking about robotics we are talking about artificial intelligence in fact big disruptor you know blockchain technologies etc which are going to re- replace a lot of people and people lose jobs what happens to your consumer population we are creating more inequality the technology even though it is on one side going to do a lot of benefit and it is going to change the way we live but what is happening is that the number of people who are going to be rich and super rich is going to be further reducing and these people are going to be you know massing wealth much more than earlier and then the, the general people they are purchasing powers you know uber for example has created a lot of drivers a lot of jobs for drivers logistics company but what is the future of these drivers what is going to be happening to their purchasing power that just is going to grow as help of inflation but there's no future you know like we had the earlier let's say the manufacturing industry if somebody got joins in as a trainee and then goes on to become a general manager now those are some of the historical trends which are in for change you are going to have a, a you know, the the mass of people who are be you know you the, the societies are going to face problem how to keep them productively deployed why because artificial intelligence robotics this is going to displace a lot of lot of people and we will have unless you know the the political system and the governments they come out with some kind of uh, way of uh, you know social benefits to these people and they have some uh, way to survive we will have a huge social problem that the technology is going to be creating and if the number of consumers also reduce because of the purchasing power is going to be in the hands of few we have to think how this disruption will impact different businesses 
And that's the insight I just like to share, right? So if we have any... Well, uh, really very good insights. In fact, I wasn't expecting at all from this session, but really very good insights. And uh, all these changes, in fact, my son was telling me uh, since uh, a month back, and uh, this is what's going to happen to this world. I was not believing, but after watching this video, I can say that uh, this is what uh, really going to happen in future. Uh, really very good insights, sir. Thank you very much. So I am now coming back to the building of sustainable global businesses. Now, history of globalization. I think very important that we understand how the uh, globalization is itself to divide the phases in three. You know, one is before President Trump's election, which happened, I think, November 2016. And then 2016 till now, the pandemic, you know, uh, striking us in March or January. And then you see that uh, uh, last 30 years, if you see, uh, we had uh, uh, the thought process was that, you know, the countries that are best in technology and they have the raw materials, etc. the most efficient people, the most cost efficient people should produce and we should encourage free movement of goods. Now that was the basic pillar on which globalization was developed. Now what happened is, what we must discuss is the environment. So we did not say that you are not going to produce at the cost of environment. What essentially what happened is that developing countries like India, China, they did not really care for the environment and then we produced at the cost of environment. And the cost of production became cheap. And because of the free movement of goods, the World Trade Organization was, uh, you know, promoting, giving free access to the markets. And developed countries gave free access of their markets. And a lot of products started coming from the developing world to the developed. Now, in the process, what happened? The jobs got shifted too, right? So there were people the, in the developed world who lost their jobs or who also had the problem of immigration, country like USA, where, you know, the immigrants took away the jobs. You know, the, the earning power of the local people reduced. Now, all these trends developed over the last, let's say, four or five decades, Right? And then came a situation where, because the jobs were lost, and then comes come new leadership, and they're talking about now giving better jobs, stopping immigration. So you saw the impact of that in the form of Brexit, right? And you saw the emergence of new leadership. And now people are talking about not free movement of goods anymore. We are seeing that every country is becoming protective of their industry. Why? They want more job creation in those countries. Now, this is what I call is a different <coughs> point. And this started, this has accelerated after President Trump has come. The thought process had already started. And, you know, people now want to see that, you know, that the natives, the local population is deployed productively. They have the purchasing power and they say that now we are in inviting investments, not free movement of products. Now that is a big shift in thinking. Now this is going to impact creation of global businesses in a very big way because Earlier, I mean, my lifestyle, if you see, we used to go do market developments, you know, then wherever the pricing was, okay, you know, fine. But now people are saying, hey, can we look at you manufacturing it here? So as a result, now you will see that we will have to also, as Indians, think about setting up, you know, transferring technology wherever possible. We were talking about Africa and uh, Mr. Sarna, Sarma, he talked about uh, this, uh, you know, how and when. Now, I am in pharmaceutical business and I will tell you that African market has already created an ecosystem where there are higher duties on import of, let's say, finished formulations, tablets, capsules. They are encouraging people to come into their region and they have obviously created a free trade region which is giving access to the free markets in the other Africans. So, West Africa, East Africa, they've created the trade groups. And you set up a production in Nigeria, you get access to other 16 uh, markets. You know, there's no duty. Now, if you see the, if you study the ecosystem that they have developed, you know, the, whatever government is buying in, in the form of medicines, and if you are a Nigerian producer, you get up to 15 to 25%, let's say, preference on prices. 
right so it is and if you see the last few so many years a lot of exports have happened from here of the finished formulations but if you see now in the future there is a different business model emerging now what we are talking about is taking the raw materials from here taking the machinery from here maybe taking some of the skilled manpower from here giving employment to the people there and eventually skilling them in the art of manufacturing there and then supplying to the entire region which is consisting of maybe 16 or 18 countries and there will be no customs duty but if we enter with the finished product there there is a huge custom duty so you can take packing materials here you can take everything there and now that is a if you see uh, business model wise also if we are talking about creating purchasing power you know we have to have balanced development i think from the social point of view also it is better so this is a very big tactical shift in the thinking of the global entrepreneur which is now needed you know a lot of textiles you know you have knitting uh, machines etc maybe we will have to think you know if we are going to enter africa maybe that is a business model right and that is how we will be creating wealth in the future the more multiple manufacturing sites that we have so now that means we will be looking at trade blocks and then the good countries in the trade block to again answer mr sharma's question where which country you will need a country which has a preferably a very stable economy a stable currency in the region because currency fluctuations they kill your business you need a country with let's say political stability so when we are talking about pestel we need these parameters you need a country which is not let's say suffering from terrorism these are again some social uh, issues that are also getting created we need a country where skilled men power or education or there, there is good uh, let's say trained people available because eventually as i said we need to have trained people for uh, you know our uh, businesses so you select a country in a region find a partner but again the the business model for the new globalization era which is going to be now valid for the next uh, few decades is that you will need a local partner you will be a foreigner in that country you can take your capital you can take your people you can take your technology you can take your raw materials but you will have to skill the people of the local population you will need a good very local partner and those are the kind of joint ventures i think the future trend is going to be and we have to start thinking on those lines right so this is going to be the next uh, uh, business model now the role of governments and international regulatory bodies right the world trade organization already we see is going to be defunct it's already you know and right now i mean because of the pandemic even you are seeing that world health organization also is uh, people are not uh, it's losing its weight right so there is a uh, uh, you we have seen those changes but then one of the things that will be needed you know is as a global entrepreneur one very important trait that will be also required will be resilience you know and how to develop that trait i think uh, 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 we will start doing that from the next uh, session that is tomorrow onwards and i'm going to now talk about how to empower ourselves for uh, becoming a successful global entrepreneur what are the traits needed and how do we uh, uh, train ourselves and how we acquire those traits first is understanding of those traits and i'm going to be talking about how to be a disruptor first how to be an innovator and we will be learning from some of the case studies so tomorrow we will be talking about past disruptions very quickly which are the businesses that got disrupted we will be talking about the current disruption creators and i have videos so you know we'll be having 3 minutes 5 minutes videos of the successful companies who are creating disruptions across sectors i'm not only talking about uh, let's say the technology that will uh, obviously most of us are not the swiggy not the olas and ubers i'm going to be talking about a lot of different companies even in the fashion industry uh, these countries how they are creating in the food business in the organic food business and what are those businesses that uh, can be brought to india and they are very futuristic businesses so we'll talk about them but in order to think like a disruptor and in order to think like an innovator how do we empower ourselves and that is uh, 
we i am going to force you after you see the videos i am going to ask question why do you think this particular business model or this innovation succeeded not every innovation succeeds people innovate all the time but only few innovations succeed now what are the ingredients of that innovation that goes on to become a global success which becomes an amazon which becomes i hopefully swiggy which becomes an uber which becomes an alibaba what are the ingredients in that innovation and once we understand those ingredients and i can tell you the ingredients that we are going to be talking about they are pretty comprehensive i guarantee you that and that is a lot of research and reading and talking to some of uh, thought leaders and those concepts we have taken and we will be talking about once those ingredients are used to create an innovation or to select an innovation your success is guaranteed and that is going to be the topic for tomorrow great okay thank you thank, thank you. you thank you sir thank, thank you. you so much you are just no, arun bhai nice. you are just fantastic thank you sir i hope to see you tomorrow yes thank you so much i hope the generation next is also listening Yeah. Otherwise, get them tomorrow because tomorrow's session actually is for the future entrepreneur. Okay. Of course, it's got nothing to do with the age. I consider myself a future entrepreneur. At <laughs> 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 my age, you're the youngest. <laughs> <laughs> Mr. Segal, thank you so much. Uh, uh, thank you for this session, and uh, thank you all the participants. We'll meet uh, tomorrow at five thirty. Please uh, log in five minutes before so that uh, we can start the meeting by five thirty. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you, Thank you. Thank you. Thank you sir. Arun sir. Thank you. 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 Thank idea is to create more business have a forex growth yeah yeah so this is ankush here yes sir. just uh just uh, uh, this was a little thought provoking uh, since some days you know back uh, i was thinking about this that uh, when this pandem pandemic uh, was going on and everyone said that you know when once mr trump said hydroxychloroquine is the way forward to or the so uh, thinking on this same idea i was i just got a thought that hydroxychloroquine is malaria and the best market for selling this product is africa so on the similar lines of you know going there and setting up factory why not setting up a factory in africa in a in a market which is like nigeria <laughs> or something like that <laughs> <laughs> so you get access free access to so many markets yeah now now the business model ankush is you you can either manufacture hydroxychloroquine there or you can manufacture hydro hydroxychloroquine in india and take the api there and manufacture the tablets there <laughs> you know now if you look at the production process uh, there are so many solvents used in india you know we recover these solvents and these solvents are very expensive right in uh, you know in africa there is uh, not no use for those uh, spent solvents and they will be getting added remember one of the strategies i said this is the cost leadership your cost of production has to be lowest so if you are going to let's say throw away those uh, uh, spent solvents in africa because there is no use for it mm -hmm. right even if you recover you know you will have to spend extra and then you know you can't go on recovering them there's only one time you can recover after that you have to find use in other industries in india because we have an ecosystem we manufacture so many kind of chemicals that some of the solvents which are spent solvents from the pharma industry they get into let's say the color industry they get used in color industry so we have an ecosystem we have a use of that now what happens is the impact of this on the costing of manufacturing hydroxychloroquine is not extra in africa if you were to manufacture this you cannot create cost leadership 
You understand what I'm saying? Yes, sir. So, so therefore, manufacture hydroxychloroquine in India, take this in Africa, create tablets there. Right. That what is a business model which is again having all the three innovation, you have the cost leadership, and by making it made in Africa, you get access to all right. the markets and you can also create service leadership. Great, sir. Great insight. I just just the thought, you know, building on on hydroxychloroquine because every Indian company was moving to let's start a plant for hydroxychloroquine. Hydro so it just came to mind that Africa is a big market, so why not set up a plant there? But uh, great insight from your end. Yeah. So that's what I'm saying. That you know, I'm sure you know if you take up take the textiles also. You know, uh, taking yarn from here maybe setting up uh, the knitting factory there. That could be an idea. Making yarn there, I don't know. Not a good idea. But but you start with the end products because cotton. You need cotton. You have to have the very good quality of cotton. I don't know if there is a country in Africa where the quality of cotton is good. Then it, it makes great sense to even manufacture yarn there. But these are some of uh, the ways, the thought process, and the application of concepts. You know, it's the application, Palavi. Here, I hope you are there, Palavi, or you left. So the application of concepts that we just did today, here they are, right? So okay. let's. Sir, this, is, this is Michael. First yes. of all, I would like to you know say this class was very informative. Thank you for that. And uh, Michael. Yeah, one question that I have is that uh, due to this pandemic, a lot of people are, um, you know, focusing on uh, trading, like stock trading. And uh, uh, especially in my business, what I do, I have, a, I own three electronic store, showroom, retail business. So that has been affected very badly because of this pandemic. And so what I did, I was able to, you know, I was during this uh, three months period, I was focusing on trading, stock trading, which was, I was very new to it and especially actually pharma, pharma sector has been doing very well especially Sipla and other companies have been very doing very well and uh, the thing is so do you think do you have any do you have any future on the stock trading number one question and the other one is what you what are your thoughts on this China uh, the uh, the restriction on the Chinese uh, China imports so these are the two questions that I have sir. okay uh, see, one thing is that I will always encourage you to first look at your business and how to make it relevant, right? So, as I said, the digital transformation, can you partner with some, you know, people are looking for, the stores have become warehouses of the e-commerce companies. Right, yes. Right? So, this is the time for you to maybe tie up. Now, there are a lot of uh, local, uh, let's say, there is there, there's a company called, uh, and it's part of my uh, disruptor list in India, company that is actually helping individuals like you and me. If we have a product, we can sell it on the e-commerce platform. Right. Okay. So now you are having products, you are having your supply chain. Can you create, now, if you have maintained and retained data of your regular customers over the years, you have three stores. Yes, yeah? sir. This could be now leveraged upon because it's all going to be about a customer relationship. Now I'm telling you my own example as a consumer I'm giving you. I had this, uh, uh, my, my microwave, it, it busted, it called up, you know, my, my uh, chroma, the man, the man, right? Right. In the COVID times, right? He said, sir, I will deliver. Okay. okay? Now, am I going to leave him? No. Said, no. To retain no. him. Right? Now you see, this is an opportunity for people to bond and keep make the bonds stronger. I know I can get these things very cheap at Amazon. But you know, Amazon was not delivering in Burley area. It still is not. Are they delivering? Maybe. Yeah, but yeah. that's not relevant. What is relevant is how, yeah, yeah. To, how can you first transform digitally? And now Reliance is coming up, of course, with a model that you. I hope you know that Reliance is a great example of this, creating disruptions in India. They're doing it with you know, 4G and 5G. Uh, 5G. They become debt, debt right. free company as well. <laughs> well, the thing is that, you know, their new model where they are going to be integrating these small time Kirana stores into the e commerce, right? That is a model you should study. Okay. And maybe, you know, if you, there are more people like you, and I'll tell you one more thing the cost of development of apps is come, come down drastically. Okay. okay. So, how and you don't have to be an app expert there are enough of technology 
people out there who are available there are companies who are available only thing is that we have to focus on how we can integrate technology into our traditional businesses to make it relevant i gave you my own example that i am thinking of creating apps we are having zoom meetings with our customers i told my people that i started writing so many blogs on pharma i started sending links to my customers on how things are changing i'm thinking of creating now video content on uh, you know what are the changes that are happening in the indian pharma you know topics of interest to engage with the customers so that they come to me for information and when they have respect for a company the wealth is a by product right right so think about how you can do uh, the digital transformation where your stores are located which are the people i hope you have database of people or what how you can really uh, create a digital uh, transformation maybe if there are more people like you you know create an app and yeah go to people and sure sir thank you very much okay good yeah right N- nice uh, interaction we'll see tomorrow come with a uh, much uh, questions and uh, uh, topics to discuss sir will be happy to spare more time for this session okay good night sir thank you good night bye good night thank you bye bye take care bye thank you very much very thank superb you. thank you thank you sir bye thank you sir thank you very much god bless thank you